new since we first set foot on Inazuma. So many things have happened since then! Yeah, we've definitely made some progress on our journey. So, where should we go today? Huh? What's up? So you don't have a vision after all. Seems like I've mistaken you for someone else. At the very least, you should make sure you've got the right person before you go attacking them. No, wait! Even when you've got the right person, you shouldn't go attacking them out of the blue. It's dangerous! Have you ever met someone by the name of Kaedahara Kazuha? He carries a sword just like you. I've also heard that he possesses an animo vision. That's none of your business. <sighs> Never mind. You don't look like you know anything anyway. I'm wasting my time. What the heck is this guy's problem? Coming around here, waving that weird sword in our faces, and he didn't even apologize. Seems like a real nutcase. Well, one thing's for sure. No why are we telling him anything about Kazuha? Right? Paimon has a feeling, though, that even if this guy gets to challenge Kazuha to a duel, he won't be able to beat him. Anyway, just to be on the safe side, we should go find Kazuha right away and tell him to watch his back. Oh? What kind of hunch? A special connection? You mean... Beyond already knowing each other? Hmm... Yeah... Maybe a little... Uh, but then again, most people look pretty much the same once they start fighting, so that doesn't really prove anything. Anyway, there's no time to lose! Let's go tell Kazuha so we won't get into any danger! Paimon heard that the Crux fleet is stocking up in Rito at the moment. Let's look for him there! Hey! Uh, hello! Do you know where Kazuha is? <laughs> You're looking for Kazuha too, huh? Guess he must have done something impressive after all. <laughs> well, we took the small vessels into Rito on a routine supply run, only this time, as soon as we entered the harbor, we ran into a huge crowd of Inazumans, all of them wanting to know about Kazuha. If it's because of that battle on Nizuchi Beach, Captain Beto had a great run there too, but... I don't see her getting this kind of attention. Kazuha keeps to himself most of the time. In fact, there are times when he doesn't even listen to the captain, but she just laughs it off. <laughs> oh, so you still don't know what he did. I've heard bits and pieces. It's something about him blocking the Raiden Shogun's Muso no Hitotachi. Is it really as big a deal as everyone's making it out to be? Really? Wow. When you put it like that, it all makes sense. <laughs> In that case, his newfound stardom is well-deserved. He was called away earlier by some people from the Tenryo Commission. They said they had something important to discuss with him. I thought they'd come to arrest him at first. Turns out they couldn't have been friendlier to him. Seems like they really respect the guy. Just a little while ago, this would have been completely unimaginable. Guess we'll go pay a visit to the Tenryo Commission. All right, then. I'll just stay here and carry on trying to fend off the crowd. Oh? It's you. Greetings. We were just discussing the repealing of the Vision Hunt Decree. Since you're here, you're very welcome to listen in on the conversation. 
We invited Mr. Kaidahara here to extend a gesture of goodwill on behalf of the Shogunate. Your hard work has secured for us the agreeable state of affairs that we now enjoy. Also, I've been granted the chance to correct my clan's past mistakes, and for that, I'm deeply grateful. The Almighty Shogun has issued a large array of directives aimed at resolving, or at least easing, the tensions that have built up over the years. The Tri-Commission has made the recommendation to use this opportunity to restore the honor of the Kaidahara name. Regarding the history of the Kaidahara clan, I trust that you're already somewhat informed? In short, there was once a group of select bladesmiths who served the Shogun directly, responsible for upholding and further developing the traditional blade-forging arts of the Almighty Shogun. The Kaidahara clan belonged to this class. But there came a time when some of these bladesmiths revolted and fled to Snezhnaya. Both the Kaidahara and Kamisato clans were held accountable for lax oversight and entered a period of great turmoil. We later learned that the whole misadventure had been secretly orchestrated by the Fatui. Attributing all of the blame to the Kamisato and Kaidahara clans was neither proper nor just. Considering Mr. Kaidahara has once more made an outstanding contribution to Inazuma, the Almighty Shogun believes he should not only be rewarded for his achievements, but also receive recompense for the excessive punishment borne by his clan in the past. In the interest of preventing further harassment of the bladesmith clans by the Fatui, we chose not to publicly release the findings of our investigations into these matters. We trust you can understand why this was necessary. This is a true honor. I am delighted to be in a position to receive the goodwill of the Almighty Shogun, and the Shogunate at large. However, would I be correct to assume that this magnanimous gesture does not come without some strings attached? I can assure you that nothing could be further from the truth. We seek only to correct a past injustice. With the Kaidahara clan's reputation and occupation restored, the Kaidaharas will be bladesmiths once more, and your wanderings will finally come to an end. You will be able to lead a safe and prosperous life in Inazuma City with the Almighty Shogun's blessing and full support of the Shogunate. I have grown accustomed to life among the elements. I fear I would no longer feel at home behind the tall walls of a stately abode. Yet my ancestors did indeed take great pride in the name of Kaidahara, and the art of blade-making for which it stood. I do have a responsibility to restore their honor. I sense some hesitation in your words. Should you accept this offer, I imagine many of the malicious rumors currently circulating through the populace will disappear. Malicious rumors? All we heard on the way here was so much praise that we almost wondered whether there was another Kaidahara Kazuha in town. Well, to some, the Musa no Hitotachi is something that can never be defeated. They cannot accept the idea that Mr. Kaidahara really parried the Shogun's strike. Also, eyewitnesses saw him using the power of Electro in addition to that of Animo. As a result, the falsehood that Kaidahara Kazuha was using a delusion began to spread. What? But that doesn't make sense. Using a delusion turns you old and frail, and Kazuha still looks fine. That is correct. However, to some people, the idea of a single person wielding two elements at once is a more inconceivable notion still. This is just one of many similar rumors. I am very uncomfortable with being the subject of public discussion, no matter whether it brings suspicion or stardom my way. But perhaps, if the Shogunate is willing to publicly support me, this situation will blow over more quickly. This is precisely why I encourage you to give our offer some serious thought. It stands to benefit all of us. Hmm. Please allow me some time to consider. In fact, let us put this discussion on hold for the moment. <sighs> well then, what brings the two of you here? Yikes! We nearly forgot about the most important thing! Why would such a dangerous individual be looking for me? No, this puzzles me as much as it does you. My fighting forms were taught to me by my family, based on techniques originally developed for blade testing. We undergo rigorous training to standardize every motion the blade is put through, so that each can be fairly assessed for quality. Over time, these techniques came to form something of a Kaidahara sword art, focused on blade testing, but
but with a full repertoire of combat forms. Those forms are quite different from the more practical ones typically used by samurai in battle. So it's hard to imagine that the similarity you speak of was coincidence alone. All the more reason to watch your back! This guy was a serious nutcase. Indeed. He sounds highly aggressive. Anyone he targets is at risk of serious injury. Or worse. In that case, I will send some men out immediately to search for him. Thank you. I must say, I am now very curious about this matter, and I will also need some time to consider your offer. I will first join the Traveler in investigating the one who attacked him, then give you a conclusive answer upon my return. Very well. Please stay safe. Come on. Let's go and track down your aggressor. to ask you a quick question. Do you know if anyone around here has been looking for him? Uh, for Kaidehara Kazuha, we mean. <laughs> Aha! So this is the renowned Mr. Kaidehara. I've heard a lot about you. It is an honor to finally meet you today. You are too kind. We are currently investigating an assault and would appreciate any help you can offer. Oh? You were targeted in an assault? Let me think. I can't seem to recall anything of immediate interest. Mr. Kaidehara is currently the talk of the town, so there are always a lot of people looking for him. To be honest with you, our detective agency has recently been receiving many inquiries from people wishing to obtain Mr. Kaidehara's personal information. Some of them were offering us millions of mora just to gather the information they want. If these were more legitimate commissions, Songo would have snapped them up in an instant. M millions of Mora? Whoa! Oh, wait. Even at that price, you probably still shouldn't. Please, accept my thanks for looking out for my privacy. Of course. No matter what, we only take on legitimate cases. We don't make our money by revealing details of other people's day-to-day -day life just for the sake of it. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little off topic. What I'm really trying to say is, it doesn't surprise me that a complete stranger is looking for Mr. Kaidehara. But I wouldn't know where to begin if we want to connect this with an assault. Then let's put that connection aside for now. Have there been any other attacks or similar incidents recently that stand out as particularly unusual? The Tenryo Commission had very few leads, and I thought you might have some information from different sources. It's true that the commissioners aren't clued up about every little thing that goes on out in the streets. But typically, it's only the most trivial events that manage to escape their attention. If anyone had been out there attacking people, that would be assault, in which case the Tenryo Commission would absolutely get involved. That... Oh, that does make sense. Uh-oh. Looks like the trail's already run cold. I still find it difficult to believe that whoever attacked you hasn't been causing any trouble elsewhere. Few people possess your prowess in battle. So unless you were the first person he targeted, someone is certain to have been hurt by now. I am well aware of your talents. There is no need to be humble around me. In fact, I'm quite relieved that you were the one he targeted. It would cause me great grief to see someone become critically injured or lose their life because of me. For the poor victim, this would be a completely senseless crime. Don't worry, we'll find him. It seems you are every bit the selfless hero they make you out to be, Mr. Kaidehara. Surely this same concern for your fellow man is what drove you to fearlessly raise your blade against the almighty Shogun. You flatter me. Truth be told, I don't know quite what came over me in that moment. <laughs> you are much too humble. Don't worry, I completely understand your concerns. I will try my best to gather whatever leads I can for you. Oh, actually, there was one strange incident over the last few days. It doesn't involve an attack, though. Let me tell you about it just in case. Sure. During times like this, the more information we have, the better. All right then. Recently, 
two people went missing from the city at around the same time. One of them is a pretty well-known collector, surnamed Nagato. The other, Amenoma Yuya, is a samurai from the Amenoma clan. Amenoma! Now there's a familiar name! Right. Yuya is the nephew of Amenoma Togo, the owner of Amenoma Smithy. Two grown men going missing at the same time. Hmm. Their cases are likely connected, but I don't know much in the way of details. I recalled this because Amenoma Yuya is also an accomplished martial artist who is skilled with the blade. Perhaps he is the one you are looking for. Understood. Though it seems highly unlikely to me. I neither know this man, nor do I have any idea why he may wish to attack me. Sure! Can't hurt! We never know what we might find out along the way. Thank you, Ryuchi. We'll start by making some inquiries at the Amenoma Smithy. Sounds good. All the best with your investigation. I'll get moving shortly myself. Ah, if it isn't Kaida Harakazuha. What brings you here today? Huh? You two know each other? Yes, the Kaedahara and Amenoma clans were both members of the Raiden Gokaden. Historically, there have always been deep links between the two clans. After I returned to Inazuma, I visited Mr. Amenoma to pay my respects. Yes, you may recall the story of the Raiden Gokaden from the Iridori Festival. Though all bladesmiths trace their craft back to the same source, over time, each of us has arrived at a different blade-making philosophy, spawning the development of different branches of the same art. As an example, the Amenoma art strives to emulate the abiding patience and determination of water as it turns stone to sand. There is nothing mystical to our work. There is only practice, day in and day out until both body and mind have memorized the craft, turning each motion of every technique into an intrinsic part of the bladesmith's life. As for the art of the Kaedehara clan, I believe it's called the Ishin art. That's right. Ishin art strives for complete harmony between blade and mind from the moment that forging begins. For only a blade thus forged can capture and convey its maker's thoughts and feelings, and eventually become an extension of its wielder's will. Indeed. Most samurai choose their blades, but an Ishin blade chooses its owner. You are, without a doubt, the most worthy wielder of an Ishin blade. It gladdens my heart to see that although the Kaidahara clan has fallen on hard times, its ideals and virtues are alive and well. You overestimate me. My actions are guided by my own personal sentiments, not by any noble aspirations on behalf of my clan. But let's get back on topic. The purpose of our visit today is to gather some information on your missing nephew. We hope to assist with the investigation. It may turn out that this case is connected to another we are pursuing. Ah, oh, yes. My nephew. <sighs> I reported the case to the Tenryo Commission, but I haven't heard anything back so far. He didn't say a word before he left, which is very unlike him. I'm still completely at a loss on what to make of it, but I've done what I can so far. Worrying is futile. All I can do now is wait for the news from the Tenryo Commission. We heard that there was a collector involved in the disappearance too. Know anything about that? Yes. On the morning that Yuya went missing, he gave me a very cryptic look and said that he was going to give me a great gift. I believe he went to collect the item from Mr. Nagato after that. The next thing I heard was that a fire had broken out at the warehouse. And neither of them came back. Yes. Strange, isn't it? 
I wonder what could have caused it. Unfortunately, there was very little evidence left behind, so nobody knows what really happened. Hmm... Do you have any thoughts on what Yuya may have wanted to give you? If I had to guess, it must have been some kind of rare weapon. Otherwise, there would have been no reason for him to get my hopes up. He's never been particularly interested in blade forging, but has always had a fondness for blade testing, and can sense even the most minute differences in blade quality. He is extraordinarily talented in martial arts, particularly when it comes to the art of the sword. Truth be told, we have some information that you may find to be objectionable. The person we are looking for, he attacked this friend of mine. Based on the evidence we have gathered so far, only Yuya seems to match the suspect's profile. What? No. Absolutely impossible. Yuya is not that kind of person. He is humble and kind. Even his training is done with the goal of calming his mind. He has never gotten into a fight before. Huh. Is that so? Yes. If there's one thing I can say for certain, it's that Yuya would never draw his blade without a very good reason. But, with that said, it's equally out of character for him to just disappear with neither farewell nor fair warning. I also cannot know what course of action he might be capable of if coerced or otherwise compelled by circumstances unbeknownst to me. Anyway, should you find him, please let me know as soon as possible. Don't worry, you have our word. Hmm, from the sound of that, Hyman doesn't think Yuya was the one who attacked us as well. Yes. It sounds as if something happened when the two men met each other. Let's pay a visit to the Nagato household. I'm very sorry, but we cannot afford to pay what we owe right now. My husband has gone missing, and I'm still trying to find him. No, no, you misunderstand us. We are here to help with the investigation. We'd like to ask you some questions about Mr. Nagato's disappearance, if we may. Ah... <sighs> I see. I thought the debt collectors had come to visit again. I'm sorry you have to see me in this dreadful state. Has some new information come out? Do you know where he's gone? I'm afraid we don't have any new information at the moment. We're still trying to find out as much as we can to inform our search. With this in mind, can we perhaps ask some questions about your family's current situation? Uh, for example... Paimon's struggling to understand why a collector would be strapped for Mora. <sighs> That's a long story. Ever since I've known him, he's been an avid collector of all sorts of things. He'd always get so animated when he was showing them to me. I knew nothing about the items myself, but seeing how enthusiastic and excited they made him, I was happy to believe that they were just extremely important to him. Everything was fine when we first got married, but as time went by, things changed for the worse. Uh-oh! What happened? He lost his sense of restraint. He started buying more and more things, and even resorted to borrowing money just so he could pay for them. Our expenses really spiraled out of control when he started getting interested in weapons. It was awful. There were days when he'd spend hours down at the warehouse, admiring his weapons even as debt collectors were descending upon our house. He wouldn't sell them, wouldn't even touch them. Just sat there staring at them like he was in a trance. I'm happy he has a hobby and I'm willing to support him, but making ends meet has to come first. I've tried talking to him about it so many times, but he never listens. On the last day that I saw him, I gave him an ultimatum. I said, if he refused to sell his collectibles and pay off his debts, I would divorce him and take the children with me. Whoa! And that led to an argument. Actually, it didn't. Generally, he's a quiet man who likes to go with the flow. On most things, he leaves the decision-making to me. 
You must understand, I never would have dreamed of threatening him with divorce if the debts hadn't pushed our family to the brink. After I said those words, he froze and was silent for a long time. When he finally spoke, he awkwardly mumbled that he would pick out a few items to sell. His voice was so meek and pitiful that I felt an urge to take everything back. But then what? If I didn't draw the line, what would happen to our family? Had I not indulged his bad habits, we wouldn't have found ourselves in such a predicament. And I also don't know if he had actually come to his senses, or if he was simply angry with me. The next thing I heard was that our warehouse had caught fire, and both he and the buyer had gone missing. I see. I understand. Amin Omayuya came to purchase a weapon from Mr. Nagato. During the sale, a fire broke out at the warehouse, and both men disappeared. At first, I assumed they must have gotten into an argument over the price. But my husband has never been one to negotiate. He never even haggles when he's out buying groceries, so it's hard to imagine him getting into a fierce argument. Hmm. Maybe he was feeling the pressure from the debts? I don't know. He just disappeared after the warehouse burned down. Perhaps he's too afraid to come home, now that all his collectibles have been lost in the fire, and he's got no way to pay off our debts. <sighs> Even though I'm still a little mad at him, we're a family, and I want us to face our family's crisis together. As long as he's willing to turn over a new leaf, I know we can work things out. Please don't get upset. There could be more to this situation than meets the eye. If collecting things is a habit that Mr. Nagato had his whole life, it is quite unusual for this habit to change so drastically over a short period. But the information we gathered from the other side suggests Amenoma Yuya is also a mild-mannered man who would not be likely to start an argument. Hmm. This situation is getting a little confusing. A little confusing? More like completely mystifying! Let's try a change of scenery, and see if we can piece together what we've learned. Rest assured, we'll notify you if we find anything. <sighs> Thank you so much. I just want him to come home. Based on the information we've gathered so far, I can only surmise that the sales meeting between the two men was somehow the catalyst for their disappearance. The fire at the warehouse likely played a part in how the situation unfolded, though its exact role is a mystery. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, um, well, Paima was thinking that maybe someone accidentally knocked over an oil lamp and, um... Nope, never mind. Paimon's brain needs to rest for a while. Over to you! An interesting explanation. I was also considering this possibility. Aminoma Yuya is an expert on swords. He could have noticed some problematic details about Mr. Nagato's collectibles. Maybe he recognized a blade as a fake, or a well-known stolen item. Either way, after arguing about it, the two men agreed to hide the truth of this matter. They thought a fire would destroy everything. But then the Tenryo Commission began investigating and uncovered some incriminating details, so they fled to protect their secrets. But it's a far-fetched theory. I can't imagine how they would have been able to reach an agreement. One fact that I keep coming back to is that Amenoma Yuya is polite and well-mannered while Mr. Nagato is introverted and passive. Neither seems like the type of person who is inclined towards initiating conflict. Mr. Nagato, being heavily in debt, is also the only one of them with the potential motive to disappear after the fire. The more I ponder it, the more puzzling it becomes. Just what could have happened there? Right. Although the time frame seems to broadly match, no other details that we've learned seem to link the two events together. 
Amenoma Yuya lacks a key distinguishing feature of the attacker, namely that he is principally a practitioner of the blade testing techniques of Amenoma art, not those of the combat oriented Ishin art. Darn! We thought we could get two birds with one stone here, but at this rate, it's starting to look like a wild goose chase! Hmm. Let's keep going, since we've come this far. If we can solve the case, both Mr. Amenoma and Mrs. Nagato will be able to get some closure. Okay, but where should we go now? Let's head out of the city and check out the warehouse. There's still a chance we may be able to find some shreds of evidence. <laughs>